Well, welcome back everybody. It's a windy one here up on the mountain. We just drove around for uh, a while trying to find a spot to camp. Uh, the same spot that we fished last time has just a nice little opening where we can start a fire, pitch a tent, and fish all at the same time, which is what we want. And really there is just still so much snow. Our access is just limited. It's hard. Perfect little spot. We just walked down this uh, trail and we're right there on the water. It's not a whole lot of flat ground here. We have our fire pit here. Uh, there's no flat ground up there. Over here is gonna be in the shade in a matter of hours, really. I mean, you can see where the sun is and compared to this tree. So the only spot that we really could uh, decide on here is just right up on the water. This is flat. As long as the waves don't get too crazy, we should be dry. Um, and it's still a little bit away from the fire, so. We are planning on having a very large fire, but we also have an elaborate meal to cook, so we need a lot of coals as well. So I need to extend the size of this fire pit to make room for a big fire to keep us warm at night, and then a smaller area where I can just move coals over to. It's important to uh, make sure you take your time and do it right the first time, because if, if your fire is too close to your cooking area, you, you run the chance of ruining your meal, burning the meat, whatever you're cooking has a chance of spoiling because of the big fire that you have. So if I'm gonna have a bunch of flames coming out of this fire pit, I want at least two or three feet away from those flames where I'm gonna be cooking right here. So I need to extend this fire pit all the way out to here and then back around to where the main fire is gonna be and I can scoop the coals from the fire to the, uh, the cooking area. Yes, I brought a cooking grade along with me. A, I'm cooking a pretty expensive cut of meat along with some crabs, so I wanna make sure I cook them right. And B, I mean, I figure I might as well. We have the truck in close proximity, so we might as well bring something to uh, make our lives a bit easier. This is so simple just to throw in the bed, so might as well bring it. Setup is already making me hungry. We have a four pound tri-tip, crab legs, a bunch of cool sides. It's gonna be awesome. I'm having a hard time finding any big, sizable firewood, and all these trees uh, around me are alive and well, and we can't chop them down, so. Just got a lot of small stuff for now. How is it in the wind? Really cold. Is it really? Yeah. All right, well I got another good, I don't know, 25% more of what I had originally of firewood and I extended the fire pit all through here, but now it's time. It's time to go out, take the paddle board and start fishing. Alrighty, well we're out here. I. Uh, I haven't done much fishing on a paddleboard, but the kayak that I have is just way too big to bring like off trail and all the boat launches are kind of snowed in. So just a few weeks here, we'll be able to get the kayak out. But for now, this paddleboard is just inflatable. It's actually Peyton's um, and it gets us out on the water. I think I should go perpendicular to the bank, kind of slow my, slow my drift. There we go. Never actually fished this lake before. Every lake up here that has a uh, boat ramp is still snowed in. One of them I read about online and one of them I saw with my eyes today when we drove past it. And Our first sign of life this appears to be a dead sucker. First fish, right up on the shore. Doesn't feel too big, but nice. Like I said, I've never caught a fish out of this lake before. This guy's not bad. I'm surprised we got a rainbow first, but good to see a fish nonetheless. Let him on go. Took the hook pretty good. There he goes. There's a big one. I really wonder. Oh, fish on. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Got ourselves a jumper. Nice. Another beauty. Sweet.
Oh, I can't say that this guy didn't take me by surprise. He just nailed it while I was all distracted looking at the sucker, but nice another little fish. There he goes. So the paddleboard is fine to fish off of. This is just Peyton's personal kayak that she uses, and it's kind of nerve-wracking, I have to admit. I didn't really give it a second thought swinging that fish around up here with the bare hook. I mean, this is not designed for fishing. I think a fishing hook would puncture this really fast, so... <laughs> you know what? It allows me to get out on the water right now. The kayak is not accessible. It's an 11-foot, like, 80-pound beast. Next Tuesday is the 4th of July, and look at how much snow is here. We are at like 10,200 feet, this lake is. Oh man. They're liking the shorelines, which is fine with me because it's less windy. I got my reel in the water, of course, and now it's acting all funny. Got one right from our campsite. Smaller guy, probably the smallest of the three so far, but fish nonetheless, gonna let him go. Well, I'm just slowly adding the pile. It's pretty thin. A lot of this stuff is just no more than an inch, inch and a half thick, so. Alrighty, well, some of the meals we have are gonna take a little bit longer to make, so I wanna get a big fire going right off the bat, um, get a big bed of coals going, and we'll go from there. So this will be the only time the um, fire is actually this big. Catching any? But when you have the truck right next to you, you might as well take advantage of it. There's gonna be plenty of trips in advance that we can't do this kind of stuff, so might as well. And here I packed this mason jar full of just random seasonings. I kind of did like an all-purpose seasoning since I'm going to be putting this on pretty much everything else we cook. So just salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, some thyme, basil, parsley. I think that's about it. We're going to go relatively heavy. Pretty good. Maybe there's a little bit more butter on top. I'm just going to wrap this all up. Gonna do a second piece as well so we don't lose any of the grease. Looking better coals here. I'm just gonna spread some, kind of start moving stuff over towards our cooking area. This is exactly what we want. Just a little fire where we can just continuously grab coals. Blazing hot bed of coals right here. These potatoes are gonna go right on there. And they're gonna take a while, like over an hour probably. Well, tonight's first appetizer is gonna be a special one. We got two clusters of crab legs here, um, and we got a mason jar full of a half stick of butter, garlic, all these seasonings. I'm gonna put some of this butter on the potato, but we're gonna be dunking this crab um, into the butter, and we're gonna cook it right over the coals. Put this butter like right here on the side of the coals so I can get it out nice and easy. Like I said, they're already pre-cooked, so we're just gonna take them off one at a time and enjoy them. Oh, there we go, that's a big piece of meat. Came right out, don't get in the butter. Garlic butter. How is it? <laughs> it's good. It's really good, good. It's good. Well, now that the appetizer's done, we're gonna move on to the entree and all of its side dishes. Like I said, we got the baked potatoes going. I'm gonna cook up some bacon to make them loaded baked potatoes. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be good. We're doing a big old tri-tip, loaded baked potatoes, Brussels sprouts with bacon, and I packed a chimichurri. That was, that was the final thing. I packed a chimichurri here. It's kind of frozen, so it's gonna de-thaw, but that is gonna be delicious, a humongous meal. But for now, I'm gonna cook up this bacon, and that way we can just focus all of our efforts onto the tri-tip. Oh, they're done. Dare I grab this? Oh, oh yeah, she's hot. Definitely gonna save all of that bacon grease for some Brussels sprouts later.
Look at that. That could not have come out any better. This might, if this tastes good, this might have to become a staple camping food because it really wasn't that hard to pack all these little ingredients and put it all together. I have a rosemary habanero hot sauce from Grand Junction. I'm gonna drizzle all up in mine. Chase. So we're just gonna save just a little bit for the Brussels sprouts. So. Never done this before, but I'm just gonna start a little fire on this side of the grate and I'm gonna put the tri-tip that side down on the cool side of the grate. Pushing chunks from the fire over. This is perfect, I got a lot on standby here, so. Deshaun, didn't take long, this one feels a bit better. This one feels a bit better. It is, it's not bad. I'm gonna let them on go. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Look at that. It's cooking. That's for sure. Got the Brussels sprouts on. The tri-tip's looking a lot better than it looks on camera. Looking at it on camera doesn't look that good, but it's just barely medium rare. I cut a little hole in it. Um, which is good. It's better to be a little bit underdone than overdone, so I can just cook it a bit more and we'll be good. This sauce here, it's called chimichurri. It goes on top of uh, the tri-tip. It has just a bunch of ingredients in it, like parsley, cilantro, shallots. Uh, you can put garlic in it, some sort of pepper, a Fresno pepper typically, but they didn't have any at the store, so I used a serrano. Um, you could do oregano, and then um, like the, the, what the wet ingredients are olive oil and red wine vinegar, and you mix it all together. And I made this at home. You know, glamping really does start in the kitchen. If you want to have a nice meal that's kind of more elaborate, fine. That's great. Uh, that's what we're doing right now. It just makes it 10 times easier on yourself if you do that at home. Not burnt. If it was burnt, I would say it. I don't know how it's looking on the camera, but it looks really good in person. Perfect crust. The Brussels sprouts are cooking away. This is going to be great. As tempted as I am to cut into it to see how I did, I'm gonna let it rest for a good 15 minutes and let it come up to temperature. I know it'll gain a good five to 10 degrees, degrees just sitting in there. All right, moment of truth, how did we do? Like I said, this is my first time, so any comments or whatnot are appreciated on how to go about doing this better, but here is the final product. So much fat. Uh, there it is, probably a little raw. Probably a little raw. Mm. See, the end is like almost done. You can see definitely some pink in the middle. The outside is definitely a little bit overdone. So a lot to learn. I typically do them on a smoker or a really large charcoal grill and I can like close the top on top of it and um, it'll allow it to like cook it like an oven um, with all the ambient to heat around it. But there's no ambient heat here because it's just, you know, the heat is lost, whatever heat there is, but that's fine. I brought a very large cast iron pan for this exact scenario where I could just chop up some pieces, put it on the cast iron pan and just cook it in a matter of uh, seconds really. So. We are gonna enjoy this one way or another. All right, everything's kind of a mess, but we have our two plates of tri-tip here. All of this is just a little bit underdone, but no big deal because we're just gonna fry it up in the cast iron pan. You know, it turned out better than I thought. It had a really good flavor. We're gonna chop up the tri-tip and do like steak and egg, breakfast tacos. Um, they should be pretty good. It definitely doesn't look that appetizing, but you know what? It's just, it's lean meat. We cut off all the fat. This is just good tender tri-tip. It's already like pretty much cooked through. So it is what it is, you learn. Nice, nice, nice. Alrighty, well I just got done cooking for like the last six hours. We fished a little bit on and off during it, but it feels great. We're all cleaned up packed up we're gonna take our little folding table back up to the truck it feels great to be all organized now it always makes things way better when you can catch fish right here sleep right there cook your meal right there relax in the vicinity and just hang out it's getting really cold we're gonna get in the bags i'm exhausted between collecting all the firewood and building the fire pit and bending over with all the cooking to do with but this is really just the beginning even though we're 
just really able to start camping up here now. Our falls go for a really long time. We could probably spend the night in a tent up here through October almost. Looking forward to a ton more adventures up here down the road.